Hello my friends, welcome back to the flight deck. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've done to my Ichin E58 to turn it from a lame toy that depends on a laggy Wi-Fi connection to a pretty decent sport flyer that I can use with my Tyrannus radio and my Fetcher goggles. From the outside, not too much has changed because the main job that I did was replace this stock electronic here with these three components here, which are operating on standard hobby frequencies so they can be used with a lot of different equipment. I have put links to all these parts and related information into the video description. As you can see, I'm still using the stock battery. More about that later. And you need a screwdriver. I think there came one with it, like one of these here. Do yourself a favor and get something a little better. Then it's a little easier to screw a lot of little screws. I'm screwing a lot of, a lot of little screws, so I have the luxury of this thing here. And because people are probably going to ask me again, here close up, it's the Sudong SDDA1000L. For the first step, there are only six screws to remove. Two here, two here, and then two in the front here. I have already not bothered about the two front ones, so I only have the four in the back in there. So, mm, how can I screw without having shade on the screw? Screwing and filming. All right, here we go. Well, I guess it's not that exciting to see me screwing, so let's speed up the footage a little bit. Once you have removed all the screws, then you can pry the top half off by just pulling where the arms join the body. That's where there's still little pins sticking from the top half into the arms. I'll show you in a sec. See those two pins? They're sticking in those holes that are holding the swivel arms in place. There are these O-rings, rubber O-rings, between the arms and the upper body, but I keep losing them and it doesn't really seem to have much of an effect, so yeah, don't bother about them. Now, if you have a look inside, you can see that the main flight controller has been replaced, which was quite easy, because the original one was mounted on four little screw posts in here. So, just take those four screws out, and then you can remove the thing. And then you have a couple of screws in the front, for the camera and you can remove the whole chi bang quite easily and then instead of the original controller i'm using an alien flight classic narrow with a lemon rx dsm satellite receiver which happens to fit in there exactly the green board that you see above here that's still from the original that is part of the battery compartment so when you push the original battery in there, has these three pin connectors here and they connect to that board up there, which I have soldered to the power input of our flight controller. The flight controller comes with two cables, one for power and one for the receiver. So take the large one, the power cable, and snip the red connector off and solder it to the B plus and B minus pads on the green PCB. In the front here is an all-in-one video camera and 5.8 gigahertz transmitter, the Beta FPV Z01. Very simple unit that has the advantage, it has the heatsink on the bottom, so it has a flat surface that we can use to mount it. In this case, I've just glued it on the leftover plastic bridge 
of the original camera. You can probably do a better job at that by reusing the mount that came with the Z01 cam, but yeah, epoxy did the trick for me. A few plastic parts had to be removed. I like to use a pair of Lexan, curved Lexan scissors for that. That cuts this thing into pieces pretty precisely. A go-to solution for flight controller mounting is this 3M Scotch outdoor double-sided tape. There are a lot of different variations of double-sided tape. I found this here the best. Gray sticky stuff and then a red cover that's really difficult to remove. But yeah, once you have this stuff in place, let it sit for... I mean, it sticks immediately, but if you let it sit for two or three days, it's so on there that yeah, you really want to limit your use of this stuff if you ever want to remove the flight controller again. The four motors plug straight into the new flight controller. It's exactly the same plugs and polarity, but we still need to supply the camera with power. The camera expects input voltage on these two pins here at the corner. So they need to be connected to those two pins here and that fifth connector on the flight controller, which is a stabilized filtered 5 volt output. So because the camera is not sitting on top of the flight controller as it's designed to be, we need to solder a little 1.25 millimeter pigtail like I have in this case here soldered to my camera. That's basically the connector that I snipped off an old motor. Most of the cordless micromotors are using these 1.25 millimeter micro JST or Molex connectors. That's pretty much it in terms of conversion. Now, of course, before you put it back together, put a battery in, bind your receiver, put your video transmitter on the right channel and check if it all works. I've cut a big hole in the side of the body so I can access the side USB connector on the flight controller to make changes without opening the whole thing up again. And then when you pop the lid back on, make sure those posts pop into the holes that are keeping the arms in and are not squeezing any wires. On the back the same thing. Once those four posts are in the slots and everything goes together nicely. And yeah, see, this, that was not in properly. Once it snaps in, it all feels solid and good. And you can screw your four, well, I think four is enough, or if you really want to, all six screws back in. Yeah, I only have those four. I don't know where the front two went, but it's flying really good without those two front screws. But yeah, those four I think are important because they're holding the two halves together and each of them holds an arm in. The arms are very simple to remove. I could have just popped them out when I had the top lid open. And then there's three, no, four more screws per arm to open it up and get to the motor and gear assembly, which we probably are going to have a look at in one of the next videos. For now, I still have stock motors in this copter. I've done quite a few laps with it and they're still holding up just fine. Yeah, see, here's another O-ring left over. But yeah, it'll do fine without it. And then, yes, of course, before you put it together, you'd have to do some modifications of the case. So with an X-Acto knife and the Lexan scissors, I've just cut a hole in the front here so the camera can see out. 
I've tried a few different ways to install the camera. That's why the front looks a little more hacked up than necessary. If you're careful, I'm sure you can do a better job of that. So if you want to copy this build, please click the link in the video description to get to my part list. And if you have any questions, there's also a link in the video description that leads to our community forum where I created a thread for this model and where you can ask questions. Until then, keep flying for a happy life.